Praise God. Um, where do we want this? Amen, amen. Here we going, all right? That good? That good. Wow. <laughs> so, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the comfort of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Time for comfort this evening. That your words will be spoken and those words will settle our hearts and settle our situations. We uh, pray for this weekend, this service. Um, <coughs> faithfulness of God. We just praise you. We love you in Jesus' name. Um, I love that song, you know, You're Not Alone. Um, loneliness cripples many people. Yep. It, uh, it's, it's, it's the darkness without the light. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's the, uh, it's the motions within an individual that um, cannot be controlled, uh, that uh, the individual becomes suffocated and, um, and falls into a, a, a mild depression of, of believing that no one cares and no one's there and, um, and no words can lift this person out uh, except for the Bible, the Word of God. Um, you know, Jesus, I mean, his promises are always that he'll never leave us or forsake us. And we can take them anywhere we go. And the world today needs to hear that because long periods of time of isolation, uh, individuals feel, it, feel like they are alone mm -hmm. and living in this cosmic loneliness. Um, and, uh, and it's not of God. It, it is from, it is another spirit. It's a demonic spirit that puts those thoughts within our minds and within our thinking. And we can't even counsel ourselves. And, and we start to believe that lie. And the world is always teaching a lie. The lies are always out there. You'll run into them every single day. And this is why we preach a capacity for the word of God. Uh, because without that word, without combating um, that negativity um, with truth, with, with, without combating it with the word of God, you can start to believe what you feel and what you hear and, and what, you, what you think could be about you. But, um, but you know, David went through a lot of that. And, um, and God remind them, even if, even if you make your bed in hell, I'm still there with you. That's amazing comfort to think about that. The darkest, loneliest, demonic place of hell, God is over it. And God is with you in it. So people need, um, they need a message of you are not alone. And Jesus Christ is for you, and Jesus Christ is with you. So it never depends upon us or our circumstance. We start to believe the truth which overrides that lie. And this is how we deal with the enemy that comes in as a thief in the night. It's all lies. The whole world system is lies against the believer, against, against the church, against the individual priest uh, in, in his family and, uh, and and we combat them again every single day these lies come against us and 
we must reference truth. We must reference truth of the gospel. Uh, John chapter 10 tonight. Let's, uh, let's go back to verse 9. Jesus says, I am the door, and by me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out and find pasture. So Jesus Christ is the door, and entering in through that door is where a person will be saved. And I love uh, the way these words are here. And they're very important. They're, they're there in that order for a purpose. Because it must be coming in before you can go out. We have to come in before we can go out. We must come in and get saved before we can do anything else. Any outside activity for, uh, for, for Christ. It's coming in through that door, realizing that we are saved by grace through faith. And then he starts this amazing work within us that will cause us to go out. But then it's it's always constant even after that. We must always learn to come in, get built up, get edified before you can go out. And the coming in, and, and, a, and we'll give a couple of verses, is coming into the, into the congregation. It's coming into the body of Christ. This is where we get built up to go out. This is where we get built up. Too many people want to go out, but they don't come in. What are they offering? You know, and like we were talking, Kevin, you know, earlier, it's coming into the body of Christ. It's learning how important the body of Christ is. It's amazing. But see, people cannot understand the mystery or they will understand the body. They don't understand Christ because if they understood Christ, they'd understand the body. He's the head. You know, they want to be part of the body, but there's no head over them. The head says to be within the body of Christ. Come on in. And then we go out. Let's turn in your Bibles to, uh, let's look at a couple of verses. Psalm 121. Psalm 121. And, the, and this is the start, by the way, I think. Yeah, it is. Um, this is the start of the songs of, they, they call them the song, in, in, in the book of Psalms, they call them the songs of the degrees or the songs of the ascents, right? Uh, of the going up. Yeah, the going up. So they would travel. They would travel to Jerusalem, which was not an easy trip. And, and, and it was a dangerous trip. It would be a dangerous tr trip. And the very first psalm in these songs of descent is where God never slumbers or never sleeps, and he's always going to be with you. You're not going to be alone, like we said. You're not going to be alone during this entire trip, no matter how dangerous it's going to get. Mm -hmm. This ascent is a tough climb. It's a tough trip, mm -hmm. but you are not alone in it. And look at verse 8. And, and, and what a promise to start the ascent, uh, these, these, the, the, the list of these degrees, these songs that David did. And verse 8 says, and the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. They've gone now out of their home and they're going to be coming in. This is this is a reversal of what we just were saying, but but they're going to be coming in. They're going to be coming in as one body and one group and one people, one unity. This was this whole trip, this whole ascent of going on up. Um, and um, and God will be with them. And, and, it, and it's a remembrance that we continue to to come in and to go out. It becomes our Christianity. It becomes our walk. It becomes the leading of the Holy Spirit in one's life to learn that, you know, God has this for me. Uh, turn uh, to Numbers chapter 27. Let's look at another one here. Numbers 
Numbers 27 and in verse, uh, this, yeah, um, yeah, this here um, is where um, Moses uh, is going to be shown the promised land, even though he's not going to be able to enter. And he's going to be shown that. And uh, the, the main verse I want to look at is verse 17, but 16, yeah, it says, let the Lord your God of the spirits of all flesh set a man over the congregation. Set a man over the congregation. Uh, this is a pastor. This is a teacher. One man over the congregation to speak what uh, thus saith the Lord, to guide and direct through sermons, through teachings. And look at verse 17, which may go out before them and which may go in before them. One person's going to go out. Just That's like a representative. Now we don't have that. Now we have many. Now we get to go ourselves into the Holy of Holies, um, which will go out, which, which may lead them out and which may bring them in that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. So those that don't learn to come in and to go out, God is recognize, reckoning that as um, a wandering group, a wandering sheep that doesn't even have a shepherd to lead them in. We, you know, uh, um, a pastor can lead them into prayer, they are led by a worship leader into worship, into song, into praise. And a pastor teacher leads them into the word of God. And, and this is what um, satisfies me and builds me up where I can then go out. And I can present what God has put within me of what I've heard and what I've understand. So there's a way. There's a way of coming in and there's a way of going out. This isn't a wandering by ourselves. This is God directing us by his Holy Spirit and being there as I come in and leading me as I go out. I'm not going out on my own or coming in on my own. You know, there, there's a specific way that he leads us. And the Bible says in, in Proverbs 14 that, there's, there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end is destruction. See, people want to do their own way. They want to be in control of, I, and I'm talking spiritually here now, not, not your, you know, but I, I hope and pray that your mind is constantly feeding on God because that's how we stay renewed and built up. But... Um, but there, there's 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 a there's this the way is is how God wants to teach us. He will teach us His way. Isaiah two verse three. God will teach us that way, that that way to go, that way. So um, let's uh, let's back to John here. And in um, and in verse ten, the thief comes cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that they might have life. See, the thief is coming, and there is no life there. But Christ came that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. This abundant life isn't a life of abundance of riches, even though it could be, but it's abundance of life. And, and you know, people who are dead, you know, spiritually dead, a, a dead person needs one thing, life. And a spiritually dead person needs the same thing, spiritual life. But there's a thief that comes. And this thief is presenting a, a bunch of lies. 
You know, so we need spiritual life that Christ provides. You know, that this is the reason why he came. There is no other reason for Christ to come but to give those who are spiritually dead life. And he gives it abundantly. There's an abundance of life. Like the woman at the well in John 4, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Spiritual life will pour out from you. This abundance of God's given, God-breathed life. But then we have a thief who comes to steal, who comes to kill, and who comes to destroy, to destroy your life. And, and this is done through a series of lies. And look how many people's lives have been destroyed due to so many things. You know, drugs, alcohol, abuse, you know, um, different strongholds within their life, great depression, great stresses of anxiety, you know, different things um, that are coming, uh, even, even, and there's a lot, even these family curses that are upon people's families. You know, there's no, you're not, you're not under curse under Jesus Christ. That curse has been broken, but some continue to live in the effects of it. We see this a lot when we go to Haiti, you know, different uh, family curses that are upon individuals and things. And, um, and, and it's really, really sad. And, and, and they, they believe that there is no other way. This is how I have to live and this is what I accept. And, you know, they don't understand that they're still living under something that was, you know, uh, from their old sin nature or passed down from generations. But we don't have to live in those lies. We don't need to live in the effects of those lies. And those lies are always presented before us because they're part of the world system. There is one that's over that world system who stimulates the activities around through demons and, and, um, and a fallen world system. But we're not of this world. And we don't live according to the course of this world like we once did walk at one time in Ephesians chapter 2. We don't have to live under that. And we don't need to believe the lies. This is the importance of having our mind renewed so we understand who this thief is, the one who's coming to steal. And by the way, a thief, its main purpose is to steal. But this one, he will also kill and destroy, you know, destroy your soul, you know, destroy you completely in your thinking, you know, in, in everything that he plants towards you is it will be a lie. So we must learn to stand against the lies. We must learn to stand against the lies. We must recognize those lies. And when those lies comes and those thoughts come, we, we can just quote, but I've come to give you life and give it more abundantly because it's about the abundant living. And in abundant living, I don't have to live in the results and the effects of the lies. Make sense? So he's come to give us life. He's come to give us life. So we learn that Jesus is the door in, in verse, uh, in, uh, in John 10, 1, but he's the door of the sheepfold, right? He's the door of the sheep in verse 7, and he's also the door then to enter in and to go out through that exact same way, through that exact same door, okay? Um, verse 11. Let's look at, um, well, you know, let's, let's read this and then we'll hit, hit a couple of verses. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. 
So Jesus Christ lays down his life, lay down, lays down his life for his sheep. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 34. And um, I think we did part of this a couple weeks ago, but this is a different area of it. And um, you can turn there. I'm, I'm just going to go over it. Um, and I'll read it. Um, verse 12. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered. This is judgment on Israel. This is um, going into captivity and, um, and carried away in exile in Babylon. And, um, and as they're in a foreign land and foreign country, it, it means that they have been scattered, scattered all over the place. And this was never God's intention, but they went after false idols and they worshiped false gods and not the one true God. And God sent in their enemies to destroy them. And, you know, you, you look at this here and, um, you know, you think about that they have been scattered um, and they're, but, but God says he'll deliver them from all those places. When we become scattered in our mind and in our thinking, uh, we, we go into diverse places. We're, our minds are in all these different areas and all these different places. And he blames us upon the false teachers and the false shepherds for not teaching. Because that's what causes one to be scattered. And it causes our thinking and our mind to be scattered. If you're not hearing truth, you're going to be hearing lies. And lies will cause your thinking and your mind to scatter in all areas. You'll think of all kinds of stuff. Your mind will be going in all different directions, but on truth. And it's so easily to do that and even more acceptable now because of the way the internet and everything plays into place. There are so many things to hear. So many different thought processes, so many different, you know, uh, opinions and objections and, and this and that. And everything just floods your way. And it caused my thinking to scatter. And I, and I go into all these different places. And, and, and this is where Jesus Christ um, in, in John 10 basically says that... Um, that, that he is the good shepherd and he gives his life because he's going to bring them back out of these places unto himself. And this is where we need to be. We need to be close to the shepherd. We need to be close to the teaching of God. We don't want to get too far away in different places or, or different ideas, and, and, and which causes us to be scattered, scattered in our thinking, scattered in our theology, scattered in, in even what we believe. You ever see, we've seen many amazing men of God, great teachers, great men of God, all of a sudden think things that are way out there. How does it happen? It's because they've gotten away from the shepherd. They start to hear a different voice. They entertain that lie. The thief is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. They start to think on a different thought, a different theology, a different doctrine, and now they're in a different place. They're in a completely different place. It's, it's not close to the shepherd. It's so easy for me in my mind to wander. Jeremiah chapter 4 says, Vain thoughts have lodged in my thinking. I think that's the verse. Might be off on that. Uh, I think it's 412. But anyway, vain thoughts. It means I'm now, instead of thinking on God's word, I'm thinking on empty words. 
I'm, 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 I'm preoccupied on so many other things outside of the word of God. And this is what the shepherd's supposed to be teaching. And because you're not teaching them, my people are scattering. You know, and this is why even, and, and Pastor Keith, I think, did this Sunday. This is how, maybe, maybe it was a Saturday. This is why it's so hard just to be only one day a week where you have all this other time to think on other things. It's, it's, it's sad. It, 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 it's really a really tough thing. Um, got, a, got a message somewhere on that. I got a pram tonight. It just hit me. I can't even remember how that works, but, I, but I'll come up with it. So, you know, we have a good shepherd. We have a good shepherd. Let, let's, uh, no, oh, oh, yeah, let, let's do this. Turn to Psalm 95. I need to keep my place here. You guys with me? Yeah. Facebook too? I don't see no hearts going up no more. I don't see nothing. Psalm 95. And then we'll wrap this up. Time we have. Yeah. Psalm 95, 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. For he is our God. And we are his people of his pasture. We are the sheep of his hand. And today, if you will hear his voice, and then in verse 8, it says, harden not your hearts. Remember that we got that, um, we have that uh, in, the, in the New Testament, in Hebrews, uh, says that same thing in the New Testament. Um, we we want to hear his voice. We don't want our hearts hardened. You cannot hear the voice of the shepherd with a hard heart. Listen, that's... We can't hear the small, still voice if your heart is directed or you're in a scattered place or you're, or you're in an area where you're not receptive to hear that voice. And our heart can become very hard at times. You know, we question why things are happening. And in that questioning, it brings in doubt that God doesn't know what he's doing. It's okay to question things, but don't stick on that topic for long and come back and recognize and, and just get before God on that. You know, we want to hear his voice. We don't want our hearts hardened. We don't want to be in a scattered place. We don't want to be in a place where we're entertaining lies from the enemy a constant barrage of lies, steal, kill, destroy, whatever. Get you out of the race. Get you away from running the race. Get you preoccupied with something else. Less details, preoccupied. The Bible says they're vain. You think it's important. We go there with my thinking. Easily to be moved. I'm easily moved today to worldly desires and worldly things based on what I see, based on how I feel, you know, the lust of the eyes, you know, all that. So we have a good shepherd. He's faithful. He's a faithful shepherd. He's the one who cares for us. And we... Um, you know, we, we get to receive this care. He cares for us, but we get to receive it. That care is not just, some, oh, I care for you. They're, they're not just words. They are actually things, it, it's God's love that we get to experience. He proves and shows how much he cares. He did that on the cross. He didn't need our satisfaction. He didn't need our opinion of it. He did it because he loves us. He does it because he loves us. He cares for us. 
personal care, intimate care, loving care of this Savior, of this Savior, the one who, what, lays down his life for his sheep. That's, that's, that's action. <laughs> that's action, you know. So, um, so I am the good shepherd. This is the fourth of six I am's, right? Remember them? John 6, I am the bread of life. John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Right here in verse 9, I am the door. And now here, I am the good shepherd. The fourth I am. Faithful is he. He's the good shepherd. He's faithful one. He's the faithful one. Faithful is he who calls. He's so faithful. He's called us. He calls us to be his sheep. We respond to that calling. We respond because he's the faithful one. He teaches us what faith is. We respond by that same faith. Habakkuk 2.4. The just shall live by his faith. It's his faith. So we broke these out. He's the good shepherd. We talked about being, he's the great shepherd. Last week in Peter, he's the chief shepherd. And, and, and now here, he's the true shepherd. He's the true shepherd. There's no other shepherd you need to follow. He's, he's the Messiah. He's the one. He's the shepherd of the flock. Turn to Jeremiah 23 and we'll, we're done. Jeremiah 23. Um, Baltimore tonight is having a, uh, the, a funeral for Pastor David Haynes, too. You can watch it later. Jeremiah 23. Verse 1. Did I give you this or no? Okay. Um, yeah, Jeremiah 23, 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Wow. That's a big, we don't like hearing the word woe. It means you better take warning and guard. And it's, 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 it's a woe to those that don't preach the word that uh, preach popularity, preach their own opinion, preach you know, a different gospel, a different doctrine. You know, it's um, it's just amazing on the call of a pastor, though, how God has, you know, um, spoken in a way to us that um, the calling is not of ourselves. We don't call ourselves. God calls us. And sometimes we'll look at it and the ministry will swallow you up, and that's not a bad thing. I remember when um, Pastor Scheller sent me to Miami. He was talking to me and Cindy. He goes, <laughs> laughing. He goes, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. But, but, but he know, you know, that, that, was, that was exactly how it happens. You know, because in those areas of the mistakes, we learn how little we are mm -hmm. and, and, and that we've got nothing. And it, it's so wonderful to know that God um, fills, puts the people here who he wants to hear. Mm -hmm. There, Verse 2, Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock. You have driven them away. You have not visited them. Behold, I will visit you upon the evils of your doings. Verse 3, and I will gather a remnant of my flock out of all the countries where, where I have driven them and will bring them again to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. 
In verse 4, I love this. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking anything, says the Lord. God says he'll feed them. And I love that. See, when we, just like under the Babylonian exile, when they were scattered, when you are scattered, when you are taken captive, when you are pushed out or away, this great fear comes over us. You know, and it's similar. You know, we, we look at times and events and people are withdrawn with this great fear over this COVID. And they act like it's, you know, this is something never, you know, and maybe it is a totally different vibe. But you can't say it's, a, it's something different than what has ever happened in the world. There's always been this scattering of God's people from one thing or another. To get people, to get God's people away from the unity of the body of Christ. To get them separated, drive them out this way, drive them out that way. And God says, I'm going to bring them back. I'm going to, and, and I'm going to feed them. And God feeds us. God feeds, because he's true God and he's faithful shepherd. And he's a true shepherd. He's the true shepherd, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd of the flock. We have an amazing shepherd in Jesus name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the words for this time. We love you, Father. We thank you that you feed us. You know, you know, you put us in a pasture where we're going to be fed by your word. We love you. Thank you for this evening. Bless your people, Lord. Bless them and be with them. Bless our offering. We thank you this evening. Uh, God bless you in Jesus' name. And don't forget, Sunday, be here in Miami. Be in, not no, no live, in, in the body of Christ. Pastor Shabelli will be here, and, and we're going to have a great, great time. In Jesus' name, amen.